We're at Computex 2017 at MSI's booth now looking at the X299 boards. There's no 399 yet. We'll have it soon, but for today we're focusing on 299. Uh, so the boards to look at, this is the flagship, this is the X-Power board. We have the specs on the VRM, they're using all IR, we'll go through that, the M7, the Pro Carbon Tomahawk, and then finally the SLI Plus board. Before getting to that, this coverage is brought to you by Corsair and their Vengeance RGB LED memory. The ICs on the Vengeance memory are sort of pre-selected for overclocking, so check the link in the description below for more on that. Let's start with the flagship. So uh, a few things here, we'll get, we'll get to the M2 shields in a minute. We had a talk about that, but before getting to that, for the power components, they're using all IR35201 controllers for the voltage controller uh, for V-Core. I don't know the MOSFETs yet, but we have the basics for the, the components. It's all IR. So uh, that is a bit of a trend right now with X299. We saw it with Gigabyte, and we saw it with EVGA as well. Aside from that, the normal assortment of armor and things like that are on the board, but for things that are actually interesting, uh, they're running an X16, X16, and I believe an X8, X8 for the other two PCIe slots that will have clarifications in the article in the link in the description below. Uh, for the M.2 shields, there's a new one here. This is called Frozer. So this actually latches. We'll have some B-roll of it. Latches in here. And the Frozer one has a, uh, it's an aluminum heat sink, I'm told. We haven't really obviously had time to test it yet. But aluminum heat sink, there is a three millimeter thick thermal pad on the underside of it, not present in our B roll because of trade show. Three millimeter thick heat pad or thermal pad, and they've improved the thermal conductivity of the pad. I don't know the specifics. Uh, that same pad is supposed to be on these as well. The difference between these and the previous model that we looked at on the Gaming Pro Carbon is just that screw and the thermal pad. So this screw is a bit better than we worked with before. Small thing, but uh, it's the small things that matter with motherboards ultimately. So that's the changes there. Uh, th we talked about airflow and problems like that. We'll have to test it more, but hopefully that helps out. Um, there's no syncing to the PCB or anything like that like EVGA is doing, so it's just to this heat sink alone. This is just LED uh, chipset cover, LED, LED. Uh, and then moving on to the M7 board. By the way, no, no price for any of these. The M7 board, there's digital LEDs here, LEDs, 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 obviously. Uh, this PCIe configuration is a little bit different, so it's X16. Uh, there are two X16, there's an X4 and an X8, I believe, and we'll post a correction in the comments if not. Uh, other than that, this M2 shield is a little bit different from the previous two. It's still got the mechanical action to it. It's got the three millimeter thick thermal pad, which we can show on B-roll, and just closes just like that on top of the devices. Uh, we already got a whole content piece on that in the past, so if you're curious, you can learn more there. Other than this, buttons on the board include go down to just power uh, and the overclocking dial right here. The other board has voltage plus and minus buttons as well. So this one steps down a bit, strips some of the features away to lower the price. Next, or actually for uh, VRM phases, this one is an 8 plus 2, that's a 12 plus 2, and then the rest are all 8 plus 1. So 8 plus 1, 8 plus 1, 8 plus 1, they're all IR35201 voltage controllers and all IR MOSFETs. Uh, so that's that board covered. The next one is the Gaming Pro Carbon. This board primarily focuses on things like RGB LEDs. It is more of a gamer targeted board and less of an X299 enthusiast HEDT type board. Uh, so this is something that makes more sense maybe for your KB Lake X refresh or something like that. Although you still have four DIMMs that you won't be able to use because KB Lake X, not Sky Lake X. Uh, so that, that one's, it's, it's pretty much RGB LEDs. The Tomahawk is uh, one of the cheapest boards for X299. It's always their lower cost model. The color ch scheme changes a little bit. It goes to gray and black, whereas these others are silver or black and black. Uh, and it, it simplifies things like you lose the memory uh, armor and you keep some of the PCI armor on the X16 slots, whereas the other ones lose it. And that's really all there is there. Uh, this is another M2 shield. We don't know the specifics on this particular model, though. The last one for X299 is the SLI Plus model. This is normally like a mid-range type board. No prices, again. Uh, LED is simplified here. This one's no LEDs that we can see right now. So LED, LED, and uh, two armor slots, no armor. Uh, it's an A plus one phase design. So a little bit cheaper to produce the VRM than the previous boards. And I think that pretty much wraps up the motherboards for the MSI booth. So that's all the X299 boards. As always, you can find more information in the description below. I've got a whole lot of notes that we took here with engineers and PMs, uh, but we'll detail all that stuff in the article if you're curious about more. You go to patreon.com slash gamersnext. It helps out directly. And as always, subscribe for more. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.